Well, hello there. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, hope you're having a great week and the term, the term is going well for you. Uh, we're moving now in this class. We're moving into uh, this week with the, looking at media, uh, television, a specific focus on television. Uh, talk about the work of, we'll read an article on the work of George Gerbner. Um, and just kind of dive into a little bit some analysis stuff on, on the, the effects of media. So the goal here of this, this video is just to give you a little bit of background, context, some information about um, about media, how to analyze the media, and sort of the value, the importance of doing media analysis and, and studies. Um, so if you recall back to week two or week three of the term, there's an article by Douglas Kellner, you may not remember the author. It was about the Birmingham School. It's about cultural studies in general and, and multiculturalism. Uh, there's a center called the Center of Contemporary Cultural Studies uh, based in Birmingham, UK. Um, and that center is really that organization, that, that research center, um, where a lot of stuff came out in terms of thinking about the, the influence of the mass media, how do we analyze it, how do we critique it, um, and all those different kind of things. And if you recall back in that article, the, 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 the Center for Contemporary Cultural Studies identifies three areas of analysis when we're looking at media. One of is the production uh, of media or the production of culture. Uh, and the production would be including things like the management, the, the business, the business structure, the ideology or beliefs around the business structure, the political organization of the of the business, the political economy. So one thing you can think about is like you know the number of mass media outlets that we have out there, right? The, this consolidation of media. There's very few, relatively speaking, uh, that controls news in, in the United States and also a lot of developed developed countries. So very few news outlets control a lot of news content. Well, it starts to raise a lot of questions about, you know, does that create impartiality? To what degree? What is the influence? What do we have? To, you know, what are some of the challenges that we face uh, as a you know democratic society, representative democratic society, when you have that kind of media consolidation? So that's kind of the political economy side, the production side, and then you get, um, I guess I should say, the production side too. It could be the organization, the employees, or the workers themselves, the, the gender, race, class composition, uh, other areas of identity, and that may shape content as well. Uh, and then you get the, the, uh, the text, so that would be the image, the words, uh, the text, right? So the text, what we see, what we hear, that's the text itself. And then the audience reception, how does the audience interpret, respond to, analyze, think about something, right? And there's a, there's a whole body of research in that that side, the audience reception, that we really don't even touch upon in this class. Uh, if you're interested, look up Janice Radway, R-A-D-W-A-Y. Uh, her work is sort of foundational on this audience reception side, and she was uh, looking at how women read romance novels and sort of this sort of way of audience. You know, there's the, the um, uh, what's the right word to look for? The dominant way or the suggested way of reading a text and suggested meaning, but oftentimes people read it in different ways. Some people read it in ways that are consistent with the intended message. Other people read it against the grain, or they interpret it have different meanings they associate with it. And sometimes those meanings have to do with the individual's group position, their age, their class, sexual orientation, gender identity, religious position, you know, you name it, you know, those things become influences potentially on how somebody views a text. So once again, I got three different areas, right? The production side, the uh, the text, and the audience reception. Well, for us, for media analysis, at least for us this week, we're focused on really the text and trying to understand the text. Um, and you know, sort of the the question oftentimes, you know, I don't know, people look at sort of okay, does media have an influence, right? I think that's a a, a very not a very useful question. I, you know, it's media has an influence. Uh, if media didn't have an influence, I mean, we wouldn't have advertising. If, you know, if advertising didn't have an influence, we wouldn't have advertising. Media has an influence. Images, the things that we see, influence the world, our worldview. I mean, that's just sort of a, a, a basic sort of fundamental things about, about social learning, social learning theory. Um, so the question isn't whether it has an influence. The question is to what degree. Uh, the question is, is uh, what kind of influence. Um, and maybe, you know, things like that, you know, what, what is the impact on society and culture? How does it shape a person's identity? How does it shape a person's worldview? Who benefits from those particular constructed realities? Those become all questions that become much more interesting, engaging, engaging and, and powerful to think about. Um, 
So this focus is really about the degree of looking at media influence and trying to look at the area of representation, like the things that we see, uh, maybe as a viewer, we're not consciously, you know, looking at, okay, what, what is the rate, the gender, the gender ratio of representation? How many uh, men do we see or males do we see represented? How many females do we see represented? Uh, what are the number of individuals in transgender or various places on the continuum gender, of gender identity? I mean, have, where do we see representation there? I mean, as a viewer, we may not be consciously aware of those kind of things, but we're still processing that information as we're watching uh, television programming, right? Um, a body of research, so George, George Gerber comes out of a body of research, kind of go back even further, if you're interested to look at it, it's called the Frankfurt School, Frankfurt, Germany. And it really became a center to examine, um, well, it's developed in response to the rise of fascism and totalitarian states uh, in the 19, you know, starting the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s uh, in Europe. And the concern, you know, the, the Frankfurt School was a body of research that came out of a lot of social sciences, philosophy, trying to, to address that you know, governments, uh, the state can control, if you can control the way people think, you can control a lot of stuff, right? You can control ideology, you can control sort of what people believe. Um, you have a lot of influence, to, you know, for uh, oftentimes for ill purposes. So the rise of fascism, what Frankfurt School started to look at was propaganda, uh, the development of models of propaganda and understanding propaganda. Um, and one researcher out of there, or a body of research drawn upon, influence that school is Antonio Gramsci, G-R-A-M-S-C-I. Uh, his work is pretty foundational in looking at the concept of hegemony. Uh, hegemony is a sort of idea, it's domination by consent, or control by consent. Now consent, for Gramsci, would mean, you know, things like, well, we may not be like really consciously consenting, but we're agreeing to a system we get accustomed to, we get socialized into a particular system, and we don't even reflect maybe upon those sort of beliefs that we come that we have, right? Like where they came from, their impact, the reason why they're there. So there's a lot of hegemonic things, things that are reinforcing uh, the system, um, and that we're participating in that very same system. Uh, and look up that concept. It's a fascinating concept of, of hegemony. It's about domination, not by control of the state, not by law, not by control by force, but rather control by controlling a belief system. And that's kind of the idea of hegemony. And media, you could sort of say, is a hegemonic force. Uh, that media oftentimes reinforces the very ideological system of the society itself. Doesn't, I mean, I, I would argue that you know, the media system, the mass media system, always does that. Sometimes it may be on the edge of trying to, you know, trying to create a little bit of social change. Uh, but as a mass institution, I'd always I'd say that you know it's always behind that that issue of social change. Uh, it may be supportive of some ideas of moving towards greater equity of representation or equity within society, but it's never advancing that. Uh, that that comes from somewhere else. Um, so that's kind of just a little bit. Gerber comes out of that framework and that idea, and I think you, know, you find his work fascinating and interesting. And he has this particular analysis about about violence uh, and about thinking about violence, which I found when I first uh, read his work, was a sort of focus is on control of, once we get to this sort of place, right, of the mean world syndrome, when we believe that there's a mean world, his concern is that leads to greater power of the state to create more and more regulations and social controls, and we actually lose freedom in the process of that. So his concern comes out of you know, his own experience in terms of his own life, um, and his concern about the power of the state and how that happens uh, and, and the role of the media to be able to do that. And then he kind of, his work goes well beyond sort of that and gets into all kinds of different things, uh, looking at areas of representation. That short water by waters kind of breaks it down, right? Gives you a lot of different examples and illustrations. And that's really what, you're, what, what the goal of the assignment is, to look at a TV show uh, and basically apply the same ideas that you find in the Waters article and do that on your own, right? So watch a TV show, look at areas of representation. What do you notice in terms of patterns of who's, who's, in, the, who's in the dominant position? Uh, who are the strong characters? Um, you know, all these different kinds. So sort of thinking about character development, character representation, uh, and maybe how, how to think through and analyze, you know, sort of the, these representations. So part of it is the quantitative side, counting, uh, the representation, uh, counting uh, who's present, and also who's not present. 
So for example, if you don't see any a person with a physical disability in the show, I, I would note that. Uh, if you don't identify anyone, uh, you know, um, I don't know, a person, a, a person of color, you don't identify or see anyone of a certain age. Um, there's no one represented that's over, you know, it's over 40 years old or 50 years old in the show. I think that's pretty informative, right? Um, and maybe because that's the nature of the show, but it could be, well, you know, it could be something more you could sort of think about. So we're just, you're just trying to scratch around a little bit with this assignment and looking at representation, sort of break it down in that sort of way. Okay, so for the, the five-point kind of little micro assignment for your write-up this week um, is I want you to type in a search engine, look up Budweiser, as in the beer, Budweiser ads or advertisements. And just start scrolling down, and I want you to sort of, what do you see? What do you notice? What do you notice about representation? There's a lot of research that's been done looking at alcohol, alcohol and advertising, and gender, uh, gender, race, and class issues in terms of representation. Because uh, you've got to figure out who, who are they marketing to, um, what are their, what's, who's their market, um, who are they trying to influence, and what are they using in terms of representation to maybe drive uh, purchasing decisions. So a little, just a short little discussion. So look through, you know, Budweiser advertisements and then provide a short, you know, analysis. When I say short, I don't know, 200 words, 150 words. Like, what do you see? What do you notice uh, in terms of representation? Um, and then some sort of brief little discussion within that too about um, what does that inform us? What does that tell us? And what are maybe some concerns about that um, as well? All right, so enjoy uh, the readings for the week. There's a whole body of research. I mean, there's classes that are devoted just to media analysis, and that's you know, what we could do for the whole term. Um, so this is just kind of like a, you know, a touchdown. We're just getting a little bit, little bit of information, a little bit of perspective. My hope would be is after these readings and this assignment this week, become more critically aware of what we see when we're watching uh, television programming. Um, that become more engaged in sort of being able to examine and think about sort of representation and sometimes be able to raise questions about what might seem to be progressive or what might seem to be challenging the dominant culture may actually be reinforcing some very specific ideas. So for example, there's a, a movie, I mean, uh, Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino, I can't remember what year, Kill Bill and the Kill Bill series uh, came out. I mean, women in strong, kind of a strong character position uh, and, and while that's true, you still have to contend with that it's, it's the sexualization of when women are in strong positions. Oftentimes, they're, they're the reinforcement of particular ideas about sexuality within that. Um, so, it, you know, just because we see someone in a powerful position, I think we have to sort of raise questions and think about um, how are they being represented in that position. Um, and is that reinforcing uh, particular ideas, challenging particular ideas in culture and society? Uh, and that way, media becomes a powerful influence. And as a summary point, just sort of remember, you know, that, that it's not that media does or doesn't have an influence, it's the degree to which. And then to tie it back into the Frankfurt School a little bit, once we develop a mass media system, you got to be thinking, you know, radio's, you know, radio wasn't even, you know, part of, you know, society until 1920s, 1930s. Um, and then TV, not until the 1950s. So this is a relatively new thing. So then we get new technologies in terms of social media. You think about that, sort of a major shift in terms of what we see and how we see information. Uh, and it's very powerful in terms of it's driving our ideas, our beliefs, our attitudes, you know. And that can be, uh, could be beneficial sometimes maybe. Um, it also could be very detrimental as well if we're not critically aware and critically engaged in thinking about it and those kind of things. All right, well, have yourself a great day. Uh, thanks for all you're doing in the class, and uh, have fun with the assignment.